Welcome, my name is Kathy George and I am Osgood PD's Recruitment Coordinator. I'm pleased to be here today to introduce you to our one-of-a-kind graduate diploma in Foundations of Canadian Law. Here's an overview of today's presentation. I'm going to kick off by giving you uh, some intel on who we are at Osgood PD before turning to examine the diploma more closely, looking at uh, its intended audience, its structure, benefits, costs, and content. And if I pique your interest and you find yourself um, curious about the, the diploma and ready to apply, then you will benefit from our admissions and applications overview at the very end of the presentation. So here's a bit about Osgood PD. We are, of course, a part of Osgood Hall Law School, Canada's oldest law school with top ranking. Um, our professional development division has existed for about 20 to 25 years now, and we serve both lawyers and non-legal professionals with professional development opportunities. So it makes for quite a bit of uh, dynamism and diversity in the classroom. We actually have two campuses, one in the heart of downtown Toronto above Young and Dundas Square, and one uptown at York University's Keele campus. Diploma students could potentially have classes at either or both of our campuses, so it's a good thing that they're conveniently located door-to-door -door by our TTC subway network. The diploma itself is designed for two different audiences. First, for graduates of international law programs, so those with a JD or LLB degree. And second, those without a law degree, but with a bachelor's, who just so happen to have significant exposure to legal concepts in their roles. The ideal is to expose both of these groups of students um, to a strong foundation in Canadian common law, both for their own professional development purposes, but also in anticipation of future academic opportunities, if you're someone who wants to continue in your schooling. So here are the facts about the diploma. We do feature this diploma uh, on both a full-time and part-time basis. If you're interested in full-time studies, the, the diploma would kick off consistently every January from winter 2022 onward. It would progress over two terms in an in-person participatory context. If you're looking at part-time, then we would be looking ahead to September or fall 2023 onward over four terms with virtual conferencing opportunities available to you. Regardless of whether or not you go for part-time or full-time, the intention would be to claim a total of 18 credits, uh, which breaks down to 12 credits of required courses and six credits of electives. Please take note of your respective application window at the very bottom of the screen, as this does differ depending on whether or not you're looking at full-time or part-time studies. These dates do remain the same year over year, so they will be consistent um, as we progress forward. So now let's talk about the diploma itself and the, and the course structure. Um, so the diploma is designed to expose students to the history and structure of uh, both public and private law in Canada. Um, all courses are taught by, you know, um, a law professors and practicing lawyers. And the expectation is that students would begin the diploma by taking the four courses listed on the left hand side. Each of these are weighted at three credits. Um, then you would progress on to your electives and have the opportunity to specialize within the diploma. So you might choose to specialize in criminal law, in family law, or maybe even in immigration law. Um, opportunities do abound and this list is not comprehensive. There are more courses than this available to you. I also want to make note that for international students who have had NCA subject requirements assigned to them, you may also choose to leverage this diploma um, and try to satisfy some of those NCA subject requirements through your elective options. Um, and those who do have more significant exposure to law um, may even receive permission to take advanced courses. And finally, there's just one more added benefit. If you're someone who is thinking about pursuing an LLM um, in the end or ultimately, you could potentially um, apply for advanced standing or receive, um, you know, a, a pass on some introductory courses, depending on what you choose to take within this diploma.
So I do want to outline um, some specifics for you so that we can manage your expectations of the diploma. First, evaluation methods. So um, if you do pursue the diploma, you could expect to see exams, written assignments, and presentations. So the whole, the whole gamut. In terms of um, student support from us on staff, we feature academic, career, and wellness counseling. So if you're someone that could benefit from some program planning assistance, that would be academic support. Um, if you could uh, benefit from a resume review or perhaps a mock interview, that would be career. And finally, if you happen to be undergoing anything at this given time or in future, uh, maybe struggling with something in particular, we do have a very esteemed wellness counselor on staff who is both a former practicing lawyer as well as a registered clinician. So she really understands where students are coming from and what kinds of needs they have. And finally, we have our My Career Portal, where we post different job postings, uh, such as articling positions, as well as workshops like how to ace your exam. So here is an overview of our admission requirements. All students will require either a JD or LLB from abroad, or a bachelor's degree with exposure to legal concepts in their workplace. Um, we are looking for a minimum of two years of professional work experience. We'd like to see an overall B average from your most recent educational experience and English language proficiency skills. Um, the typical rule of thumb is that all students need to have studied for one full year at a university whose only official language of instruction is English. If you haven't done so, perhaps you studied in a bilingual institution or maybe even in a Canadian college, um, you will still require a proficiency test in order to demonstrate your English language competency skills. Two recommendations. These can be academic and or professional. It's up to you. Uh, please note that we do not need formal letters from your recommendations. All we need are their contact details so that we can issue them a web form on your behalf. Writing sample. What we're looking for here is a research or analytical piece of writing. So this is not a personal statement of interest. Um, this is your opportunity to show us how you write, how you argue, how you think, and what you use is totally up to you. It could be anything from an undergraduate philosophy essay to a memorandum or factum with redacted confidential information if you happen to be a lawyer. As long as it's research oriented, it satisfies. And then finally, completion of the additional application questions. This is where uh, we ask you a little bit about you, about your interest, about your intention, um, about your career objectives. We want to find out about your transferable skills and any extenuating circumstances you think that we would benefit from knowing about. Uh, and this, this can include you know, positive things like awards and accolades uh, that you may have received, you know, from your employer or perhaps your former educational institution. Or it can include, you know, things like, um, you know, perhaps you struggled with your grades in a particular term of your undergraduate degree for a given reason. And, and you'd like to outline or specify that reason for us. Um, this is your chance to give us a more holistic picture of you as an applicant um, so that our admissions committee can make the most informed decision on your candidacy. So in order to apply, you're, you would begin by creating your Osgood PD applicant profile on our own website. You would upload all of your associated documents, including a copy of your unofficial transcripts. Please note we only need officials if and when you are admitted. So we will prompt you for those at the given time and then you would go off and make arrangements to have those sent directly to us from your home institution. Next, you would pay and submit and there is uh, an associated $130 processing fee. Finally, it would kick to us for application consideration and decision. Uh, we do try and assess on a rolling basis, and so some of you might hear back pretty soon after um, applying, while others might hear back a little later um, in the cycle, closer to the application deadline. 
That concludes today's presentation. I do hope that I have given you uh, as much insight as you could require into our graduate diploma and foundations of Canadian law. But if you do have follow-up questions, we encourage you to reach out to us at any time at recruitment-opd at osgood.yorku.ca. We would be happy to help and answer any questions. Thank you.